So today we're going to be automating this process. I come down to the studio. I ask our friend who shall remain nameless to turn the studio light on, or sometimes I just hit the switch, walk to my desk. I turn on this light as well as this light. And I also ask our friend to turn on the desk light, which is the one behind the desk there. So that is all well and good. And I can keep doing that, but I want to automate that process. I want to open the door and have all those lights turn on or most of those lights turn on. And we're going to do that with the help of the Akara presence sensor. Let's just get right into it in the box. Here's what you're going to get. You have the sensor itself, cable, plug it in. If you want to attach it to the wall, you have this here, you have a manual. And this right here is I'm guessing if you want to attach it to the wall without screwing anything in, you can use this here. Looks like this 3M tape. Don't know if that's exactly what this is for, but I'm thinking that's what it is. You most likely will not be attaching it to the wall or the ceiling. I know with the presence sensor, you can attach this to the wall to detect falls and give you alerts, but we're not going to do that. I don't think because it won't be line of sight. When I open the door, we are also going to be using the Amazon smart plug. Not sure if it'll integrate with the Akara presence sensor. However, we're going to try it. I do have this on hand. Didn't want to buy anything new unless I actually needed it. So we're going to be using this for that lamp. That's right there. So I set up the sensor. I also set a template in the app to kind of show the uh, layout of the room, as well as I set up the zone of where it's going to be reading it. The zone is what really uh, is what makes that magic happen. I guess you can say the setup is pretty straightforward of the sensor. You plug it in, it reads it and you go through a couple of uh, prompts. Some of them, I wasn't sure which I was supposed to choose. So I guess it will be a learning experience. It was easy enough though to set it up. So if I have to reset it all because I've learned that I did something incorrectly, it'll be easy enough to do that. So once I had the stuff in the Akara app all set up, I noticed that I never linked my Akara devices with the Echo. So what I did was I linked it and then all the devices showed up. That way I was able to set up a routine within the Amazon ecosystem. And that got me thinking about my smart home system, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So I set up the routine. I set up the, the desk LED strip that's behind the desk. I set up the Amazon smart plug, which the lamp is plugged into. So I set up the routine like so when there's presence detected, those things will turn on. The one thing I wasn't able to do because I can't find those devices in there is the Lutron switches. So the switch to this studio and a lot of the switches in the home are Lutron switches, but I cannot find them anywhere in the Amazon or in the app for the echo. I've disabled the, what do they call it? The skill. I've enabled the skill both in the A app, the echo app, as well as the Lutron app and nothing is showing up. And I'm pretty sure before, I don't even know when, but I'm pretty sure they would show up previously. Like I'm almost positive. I can say the name of that particular switch and it turns on, but it doesn't work or they don't show up in any of the device lists. So I don't know what to do with that. And again, that's kind of get me thinking about, you know, this particular smart home system. So that's one thing I wasn't able to add. I'm thinking of maybe adding music to be played when uh, presence is detected. Maybe not, I guess it depends on time, but typically that is something else that I turn on when I do walk in to the studio, I like have a music uh, playing most of the time, but we'll see. I don't wanna get too into the weeds with that. So that'll be something I think about and see how I implement that a little later. So once the routine was set up, I set it up for, like I said, presence detected, lights turn on. If there's no presence detected after two minutes, lights turn off. Easy enough, right? I guess not really. The sensor keeps reading 
other people in the room when there's no one in there or just myself. It reads the light that's right here. It's on a stand. It reads it as a person. And then it reads the door as a person as well. So I, I walk out the room and I shut the door and it reads that as a person just standing there. So whether it's reading like these, these objects as people or there's ghosts in the room, I don't know. I don't know how it's reading people or, or how it's supposed to read the presence of people. But I have to go into the, um, the settings and then like reset the presence sensor on it. Um, that way there, it doesn't sense anybody in the room. But it kind of defeats the purpose if I have to do that every time I leave the room, having to reset it. So maybe I set it up incorrectly. I changed the sensitivity from high to medium. So I don't know if that'll help. Uh, and then sometimes it just starts to like duplicate people. If I'm like walking in and I'm at stationary spot and then I walk, now that becomes a person there and then it, I don't know. So maybe like I said, I set this up wrong. Maybe I gotta keep tinkering with it, move some stuff around. I even put like a little lamp where I usually leave the stand because I don't put that away, I leave it there and maybe I have to put it somewhere else, maybe out of range. I just don't wanna be like completely changing the way I do things for this to work correctly. So I'm gonna have to just kind of play around with it, see if I can make this work without having to do so many different changes. And I know they're minor, you know, move this over there, move this over here, but it's still annoying that it's reading people or reading presence when there's nothing else there. Again, ghost? I, I don't know, that's funny, right? But um, that's all I can kind of think of. Like there's no one in here and it's just reading. And I know it's the lamp because I walk up to the lamp and it's that's what it's reading. Or it reads the wall, which is kind of strange. So I kind of remove that part of the wall. So it's kind of, you know, I was actually going a little further past the wall and maybe I shouldn't have done that. Uh, Cause I have a closet right behind here and the wall kind of goes like an L shape there. And right in that corner, that's when it's reading like a person. So maybe that's what it was reading. So I kind of fixed that there. The door, I was further out than the door cause I wanted to be able to read when I open the door as opposed to when I'm walking into the door. But I changed that a little bit. So hopefully that won't read the door anymore. So there's gonna be little changes, a little tinkering that I have to do to make this right. Hopefully, cause otherwise this will be annoying that it just picks up random things. And maybe you have some tips, tricks about how to help with that. Um, I wish I could put like something that says, hey, this is not a, a person like as a, as a condition for like particularly the, uh, the lamp here. But maybe there is, maybe there isn't, I don't know. When it works, it's great. And I wish I could add the Lutron to it if I can get all that together, then this will be a great combo or this will be a great automation where I can just walk in, all the lights turn on, I walk out, all the lights turn off. But this is very much a work in progress that I'll have to just keep working on. And that leads me to my smart home system. So I was thinking about this and at first I thought it was using the Echo app, the Amazon A app, that it was maybe that was the issue. You know, that's not as robust. And obviously once I did a little bit more tinkering, that's not what it was, but it still got me thinking, should I get a new smart home system? And I think I'm going to. So I think I want to get the Home Assistant and I'm gonna pair that with Apple's Home Kit. Is that what it's called? Apple Home, Apple Home Kit. I feel like Amazon is good and it's worked well. I've used it for many, many years, but I think I want to do more and more reliably. I think I want to do more automations as opposed to me consistently talking to it and it doesn't always listen. There's times I have to say her name or its name four times before it actually understands that I'm actually trying to wake her up to, to do something. And it doesn't always do it. 
I don't know if I'm gonna have the same issue with another smart home system, but when you do use Apple Home, it's so much quicker, it feels like. And it feels like it just listens better. So I think I'm going to be transitioning to Home Assistant paired with Apple Home. I think that's what I come up with. I think that's the conclusion. And yes, it'll probably be, be a frustration, a frustrating experience at first, but I think in the long haul and the long run, it'll be worth it. I'll be able to do more automations. I do have stuff that is not HomeKit approved, enabled. I don't know what that, you know, what the terminology is there, but I would use HomeBridge to bring those devices into the Apple Home uh, ecosystem, let's call it. And maybe I'll have Lutron in there. No, obviously I'll have Lutron in there because it's in my Apple dashboard in my home kit. Is it home kit? Is it home, Apple home? I don't know, whatever Apple's smart home assistant is or smart home system is called. That's what I want to go into, I believe. I think that's what this experience has taught me that it's time to go to the next level with the smart home. And, you know, I've been reading, I've been watching, I've been seeing all these things about, you know, automations are really where a smart home thrives. And I've just been like, eh, whatever, you know, it works the way I have it now. But I think it's time to take it to the next level. So I'm definitely going to be looking into Home Assistant. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep working with the sensor and make sure and try to get it to where I want to be. But in the interim, I'm going to start looking into Home Assistant and getting that working with Apple, pair it with Apple's smart home system as well. So have those two, have those two, and I think that'll be a winning combo and go from there. I've been so stuck in the, the Amazon ecosystem, but uh, I think it's time for a change. So now I'm just rambling on and that'll be for that upgrade video where I kind of leave the Amazon ecosystem behind. And it's been great. I think it's good for, you know, starting off to make it easy. But if you want to get some real, some real power, it seems the, uh, the next logical step is going to be going to the home assistant, pairing it with the Apple home assistant or home smart home system and go from there. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you've liked this video. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video when I get these little quirks uh, ironed out. Let me know what I did wrong. Maybe I'm doing something incorrectly in making uh, this thing not detect objects that aren't people. Or maybe they are, maybe they're ghosts, I don't know. So like this video, if you want to see more content like this, comments, questions, suggestions, anything at all, put them down in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. I'd love to get us to a thousand subscribers. It's taking a long time. Let's do it. I know we can do it. Come on. And like always, Keep on living a modern lifestyle through technology. Bye. Peace.